This is the morning office for March 7th. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 95, verses 6 to 11. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Meribah, and on the day of Massa, when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, They shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. This command I gave them, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk only in the way that I command you, so that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but in the stubbornness of their evil will they walked in their own counsels, and looked backward rather than forward. From the day that your ancestors came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have persistently sent all my servants the prophets to them, day after day. Yet they did not listen to me or pay attention, but they stiffened their necks. They did worse than their ancestors did. So you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. You shall say to them, This is the nation that did not obey the voice of the Lord their God and did not accept discipline. Truth has perished. It has cut off from their lips. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come and now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. My thought about silence today begins with the statement that astonishment at the divine silence closes our mouth. There are times when we become so pleased with our own rhetoric, so mixed up in our own disputes with one another, even so in love with our own doctrine, that imperfect way that we try to explain who and what God is, that we can be thoroughly distracted from the reality of God. But when we are confronted with the actual reality of God, when we have those rare glimpses into the presence of God, all of that, what we say, how we argue with one another, even how we try to contain God with words, seems very hollow. Indeed, we must know rather than merely speak of God. And in some way, that knowing can only come in silent awareness. God who is uncreated, God who is beyond and outside of creation, can never be completely contained or explained with our words. And so it is that only silence seems able 
to somehow begin to sketch in for us the limits, or perhaps the lack of limits, of God. I ask your prayers for the day, the world, and for the church. Pray today for yourself, for all the challenges you will face today, that in everything you do, everything you say, everyone you meet, you will somehow be the hands and heart of God, and you will be the image of Christ to all you meet today. Pray for the needs of the world, especially those places where the image of Christ is least seen, or at least is least acknowledged. Pray that in some way the world will begin to recognize the peace and wholeness that God intends for it. And pray for the church as it continues its walk through Lent, as it continues its walk through human history, that it will in some way today be able to speak of God honestly and humbly in the world, wherever it may be. Keep watch over your church, O Lord, with your unfailing love, and since it is grounded in human weakness and cannot maintain itself without your aid, protect it from all danger and keep it in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>